don't forget to label what it is and the date. That way you always know what you have in the freezer. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be making a bone broth in the Instant Pot. So I wanted to share with you exactly what I'm doing. There are so many different recipes for bone broth out there and you almost can't get it wrong. I've made so many different bone broths and this is the first, actually the first one I'm doing in the Instant Pot. So it's going to take so much less time than normal. I have literally had a pot on the stove for two days making bone broth before. So this is gonna be so much easier and very timely because I have a kitty with a kitty cold and bone broth is incredibly nutritious for your dogs and cats. It's especially good for pets recovering from illness if you have a senior pet or any type of pet that is being really finicky about what they're eating, bone broth is really great to make for them. Even cats that are maybe senior or, or ill who really don't wanna eat anything anymore, bone broth is gonna be a really great way to still get some nutrition in them because they often will still lap up a bunch of bone broth. So what do you need to do to make bone broth? Well, I've gathered my bones here. You can use almost any kind of bone. Beef bones are excellent. You wanna use as uh, many joint bones as you can. The idea is that we're going to cook the bones down and pull out as much nutrients from them as possible. I've even made bone broth before, starting from a whole chicken. And what you do is you actually cover the chicken in water on, like say on, on the stove in a big pot. You cook the chicken for a couple of hours until the meat is just like fall off the bone tender. That meat is also really good to feed your dogs occasionally um, and your cats would love it too. Of course, anytime you can get chicken, it's going to be the best. Once the chicken cooks and you pull all the meat off the bones, you're gonna continue cooking the bones after that. The whole carcass of the chicken, you're gonna get excellent nutrition out of a whole carcass chicken. But today I am using beef marrow bones which are gorgeous, and chicken feet. So we're gonna get a lot of wonderful marrow out of the joints on the chicken feet. And of course, these beef marrow bones have a ton of marrow in them. So I do wanna mention really quickly that this is in no way balanced nutrition. This is not something that your pet can live off of for extended periods of time, but it is a really great addition to their regular food and it is really great, especially for pets who are ill or maybe uh, getting up in years and are finicky eaters. All right, so there are a lot of different recipes on the internet. I'm gonna do the absolute simplest possible recipe today. And if you guys get this video to 500 likes, we'll do more videos like this. I'll do more videos. Um, different recipes so you can see all the different types of bone broth that you could be doing for your dogs and cats. So in this video, again, the absolute simplest recipe we can do, I'm just going to take my bones and I put them in the Instant Pot. And the key to any bone broth is apple cider vinegar. And what we're going to do with our apple cider vinegar we're just gonna add that in and it extracts all of the nutrients from the bones as they cook. So I've got all of my bones, I'll let you see, in my Instant Pot. And I'm going to take purified water. We have horrible water here in San Diego. So we have a water delivery service. This is purified water. Um, whatever you are, giving to your, this is what I give to my pets, this is what I drink. Um, so I'm just gonna take healthy, clean water and I'm gonna pour it over the bones and you wanna get it to where you're just, you have enough water that you have completely covered all of the bones in your pot. All right, I'm gonna set it for, I'm gonna start with just two hours. Okay, so while that starts up and it starts pressurizing, I'm using the, the pressure cook feature here on the Instant Pot. So while that starts pressurizing, I wanna know, have you made bone broth for your pets in the past? Or why did you click on this video? What has you interested in making bone broth for your pets? And let me know about your pets. If you have cats or dogs or any other type of pets, post below in the comments. I'd love to hear all about why you're making bone broth and 
specifically what's going on with your pets that you are interested now in making bone broth. So go ahead and post that in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and I respond to as many people as I can. So uh, let me know in the comments. Okay, so the Instant Pot is still pressurizing. Once it's done pressurizing, it will start counting down the two hours that I set on here. So we'll come back in two hours and check on this and make sure we've got as much nutrients from these bones extracted as possible because the more nutrients we can get out of the bones, the better off the bone broth is gonna be for your pets. So we'll come back in about two hours and check on the progress. All right guys, so we are down to three minutes left on our pressure cooker timer on the Instant Pot. And what we're gonna do uh, is when it reaches the end of the timer, we're going, what's gonna happen in the pressure cooker in the Instant Pot, you're gonna have two options. You can either go ahead and release all the pressure when it's done, or you can let it depressurize on its own. So different recipes will tell you different things. What we're gonna do is let it start to depressurize on its own. So we're gonna let it go for 10 minutes. It'll The timer will start counting back up. Once it reaches 10 minutes where it's depressurizing on its own, I'm gonna go ahead and release uh, the press, pressure gauge right back here so that we can finish releasing all of the pressure in it um, after it's reached 10 minutes of depressurizing on its own. All right, guys, can you hear that? The timer is going off and that little beeping lets you know that it is done. The timer is done, so it is going to start depressurizing on its own at this point. All right, we're almost to 10 minutes. We're at nine minutes Start right again, now. I was talking to you. And we're almost at 10 minutes. We're at nine minutes right now. So at 10 minutes, this is where the Instant Pot is depressurizing on its own. So now it's hit 10 minutes. And I am going to take my glove here because I don't want to burn the heck out of myself. And I'm going to release the pressure. So now it's releasing. <laughs> All the rest of the pressure that it was built up. I didn't smell it cooking at all, and now all of a sudden I can smell the bone broth. <laughs> all right, so I don't know how long it's going to be hissing for. The pressurization is different every time you cook something, so it can go on for a couple of minutes like this. Um, once it's done, though, what we're gonna do is check and see if we've cooked it long enough. And I'll show you how we do that. The way you know that it's done pressurizing is that this little metal pin right here will drop down, and then you know, this one right here, then you know, once that drops down, that it's okay to take the lid off. Until then, do not take the lid off. Now, if you think that your pin is stuck, if you don't hear um, this hissing anymore, if you don't hear the steam being released anymore, but the pin is still up, you can take like the end of a butter knife or something and just gently touch it. And if it falls, then you're good. Um, but hopefully yours doesn't stick. Just sometimes ours sticks for some reason. All right, I think it's done, but the pin hasn't dropped. Say something. Oh, okay. So I just barely, barely touched it and it dropped. So it was just stuck. So it tells you right here how to open it. So I'm just gonna twist and open very carefully. And it made a cute little noise. And here's our bone broth. All right, it looks awesome. Let's go ahead and check and see. It's still boiling, of course, but Let's check, I'm gonna try to find one of these beef marrow bones and check and see if there's any marrow left inside. Mm, there is, so I think we might need to cook it a little bit longer. Whoa, oh wait. Okay. I'm assessing right now, guys. I don't know, I think, it needs, I think it needs to cook a little bit longer. So cooking times are gonna differ depending on what kind of bones you use and how many bones you use. Um, again, I've had this in for two hours. 
I think we're doing pretty good. Um, the Instant Pot makes it go so much quicker than a stove top for sure. But I do think I want to cook it a little bit longer. I don't, I don't think I'm quite where I want to be yet. At least with the beef marrow bones. I think the chicken bones I'm pretty good with. Um, but since I've got the beef marrow bones in here, I definitely want to, I want to cook them a little bit longer. So all I'm going to do is basically start over and put the lid back on. Uh, let's see, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm going to put the, uh, little gauge back in place for the pressure vent. I'm going to turn the pressure cooker on and I want, and yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to let it go for another hour. So I'm going to change the timer on here to an hour. That's all you got to do. So, um, it's going to start registering and it's going to start building up pressure in just a second. There, it just switched to on and started beeping. So it's starting to build up pressure again. Once it builds up pressure, it'll start the timer. All right guys. So we're at the end of the, the second cook cycle, the pressure cooking cycle. I let it go another hour and it has cooked the whole hour and it has depressurized on its own for 10 minutes so now what i'm gonna do is all right so i'm gonna take my mitt so that i don't burn myself and i'm gonna flip the vent which is why you need to use a an oven mitt or something so that you don't burn the crap out of your hand so oh, i saw it move there it just dropped on its own i didn't have to touch it this time so that means when that little knob drops, that means that it has depressurized. So I'm gonna take the lid off and look at that yummy broth we've got going on. I'm gonna set this over to the side. Looks delicious. Not really, but I'm sure it will be. All right, so here we go. Oh man, let's see. Oh, there it is. That one still has some marrow in it. That one is looking pretty good. You know, I mean, it is a personal preference. Of course, the longer that you cook, the longer that you cook everything, the more nutrients you're gonna pull out of the bones. You really, I mean, you almost can't mess this up. So if you wanna cook it longer, cook it longer. You're just gonna get more nutrients out of the bones that way. I'm going to check a couple more of these. No, we've still got a lot of bone marrow left in these bones. Even the little ones. I feel like this needs to cook a little bit longer. I really want to get the most nutrients out of it that I possibly can. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it back on. This is the first time I've used the Instant Pot to do this. I normally do this on the stovetop. And literally, I will cook on the stovetop for, um, turn that off. Literally, I will cook on the stovetop for two days. Um, I'm doing it in the Instant Pot this time. It's kind of a trial and error. We've done three hours so far. We're going to do a fourth hour. Okay, so the fourth hour of pressure cooking in the Instant Pot is done. It has been depressurizing on its own. I'm going to go ahead and release the pressure with my lid. You broke down the bones. So tired. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take it out of the actual, I'm going to take the pot out of the instant pot itself, um, because the instant pot is insulated and I want it to cool down quickly. So if I leave it in the instant pot, it's going to take a really long time to cool down. I don't want to deal with that. Um, if you're not comfortable removing it, that's fine. Um, you can leave it in, just know it's going to take longer. My Instant Pot came with these little mitts so that I could actually take the pot out without burning my hands. I don't know if yours came with it. Hopefully it did. If not, you can, you know, try to use other mitts like this or even like this to get it out. This, I'm actually, I don't have a wooden trivet, so I'm gonna put the um, liner from the Instant Pot on this to cool down so it doesn't like sc scorch my countertop, but, oh, Yep, it just dropped. So it's depressurized. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and wait for that music to finish. And I hope you have your fingers crossed for me because I'm really hoping this is done by now. Let's find ourselves some 
beef marrow bones and make sure they're yeah all cleaned out uh like i said before what what we want to do is get as much of the marrow out of these bones as possible because that is what is creating the wonderful like collagen in the bone broth which has so many wonderful nutrients for your pets. Just putting some of these bones over in the bowl over here. I'm gonna have to strain this once it cools down. So um, so because we're gonna strain this, I'm just gonna go ahead and take these big pieces of bone out. And just as a side note, guys, never, ever, ever feed cooked bones to your pets. Never, ever, ever feed cooked bones to your pets. These bones have been cooked, so they are being thrown away. Bones out of the pot, as you can see there. And the chicken feet are still in there, but they're they're pretty broken down at this point. So I'm just gonna take this pot. If you're not comfortable doing this, leave it in the Instant Pot. Um, but I want it to cool down faster, so I'm gonna pull it out. Um, I probably could go ahead and strain it right now, but I would rather not have it splash back up on me when it's like still boiling hot. So I'm gonna let it cool down for a few minutes at least. All right guys, so we've been making bone broth. We let it pressure cook in the Instant Pot a total of four hours. And I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with where it's at right now. You could cook it a little bit longer, but I'm good with it. We've let it cool off a little bit. I pulled the bigger beef marrow bones out previously and let it cool just a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is take it and strain everything out of, make sure you always pour away from yourself. So if it does splash, you're not burning yourself. And you're gonna see there's not a whole lot of bone left. <laughs> um, there's some chicken feet down here at the bottom. I've got pretty much most of the liquid out. And I'm gonna get this strainer here to get the rest. So now what we're left with is just this beautiful, yummy bone broth. All right, so we've got the broth now that I have strained and I've got this big mason jar that I'm gonna pour it in. And I actually have a, a wide mouth funnel that actually came with a um, canning kit. So wish me luck on this. <laughs> Oh, I hope it all fits. Do you think it's gonna fit? Ah, I have a little bit left, that's okay. This is a lot of bone broth, so I'm okay with that. So what I'm gonna do now is take what is in this jar and I'm just gonna put the cap on it and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and I'm gonna let it stay in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours. And that's when we're gonna first check on it because what we wanna see happen, and you're already kind of seeing it happen here, is after it sets in the fridge for at least 12 hours, the bone broth itself and the fat are gonna separate. And the fat that you're gonna get on the top of this, we're actually gonna scoop this away because that's not something we wanna feed. It's cooked fat, we don't wanna feed that to our pets. And so once that happens and all of the fat separates from the broth, we're gonna remove the fat and then we're left with just the most amazing bone broth. Um, this particular recipe is perfectly fine for you to even consume. Of course, we always wanna to try to use uh, organic uh, animal bones when you're making bone broth, whether it's for you or your pets. Grass-fed and finished beef is always best and organic no matter what animal is always best. So if you can source bones that are organic, please get them. You're gonna wind up with a much healthier bone broth. And so yeah, let's go ahead and get this into our fridge. I'm gonna leave it there overnight and we'll check out, check back in with this tomorrow. All right guys, so it's actually been about 15 hours in the fridge and this is where we're at. So there's not a ton of fat up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this off. I think the easiest way is actually going to be to cut it. All right, so now I've got all my fat in a bowl and I'm just gonna discard this. Um, it's really of no use to me right now. It's cooked fat. Um, 
which I don't necessarily want to feed my dog. So now what we're left with is this beautiful gelatinous bone broth. And you know, I could have cooked it longer and it would have been even more gelatinous, but I, I'm gonna put some in this bowl right here so you can see. Ooh, maybe. Let's see if I can get it. So you can see kind of how gelatinous it is at this point. If I had cooked it longer, it would probably, it, the longer you cook it, the more gelatinous it's going to be as long as you have enough um, joint bones with lots of cartilage. So now that we've got our bone broth made and it does look kind of like a jelly, which is good. Um, if, if it turned out more soupy than gelatinous. You can add more apple cider vinegar and cook the bones longer. Um, but let's talk about, so at this point, let's talk about feeding and storage. So you can store bone broth in the refrigerator for a few days, maybe three, four, maybe five days. Um, I prefer around three days is about my max for storing foods in the refrigerator. And anything that you don't feel like your pets are going to be able to consume in about three or four days, you can put it in smaller containers. I always prefer storage in glass containers and freeze it. And it will last in the, in the freezer uh, up to a year as long as you've stored it properly. So for me, I'm going to break this up into several smaller mason, mason jars and I'm going to feed both my cats and my dog. This will last me not very long, actually, as long as all of my dogs and cats uh, will consume this. Remember, when you're feeding this, it's food, not medicine, so it's not an exact science. Um, to my knowledge, there are no feeding studies about feeding bone broth to dogs as far as how much, dogs and cats, as far as how much to feed. So for Kim, um, she is a small 15, uh, not even 15, she's more like a 12, 13 pound dog. Um, I'll probably give her two, around two tablespoons a day and I only feed her once a day, so I'll give her around two tablespoons. And probably not even that much for my cats, maybe one to one and a half tablespoons per cat per day. Um, you could probably feed a little bit more than that, but again, it's food, not medicine, so it's not an exact science. Um, just, you know, feed an adequate amount, which would probably be, you know, for larger dogs, you could probably feed three or four tablespoons um, at a meal for a larger dog, as long as your dog will eat it when they should, because this is amazing, amazing nutrition uh, for your pet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this into smaller containers um, and I'm gonna store mine about three days worth in the fridge and the rest I am going to separate into smaller glass containers and put in the freezer. So if you have any questions about bone broth, if you like this video, if you like this video about bone broth, there's so many different recipes that you can do for just for bone broth. And so if you like this kind of content, please give it a big thumbs up and post below. If we get this video uh, up to 500 thumbs ups, I will do more bone broth recipe videos for you guys and comment below and let me know how your dog or cat liked this particular recipe or if you have another recipe that you really love or another recipe that you've been wanting to try out and you'd rather me try it out first, let me know. Post below in the comments. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.